Hi, this is Kamran. Today's topic is business communication. How can we make our communication more effective? What is effective communication? The exchange of information between people or groups with feedback. If the message has been sent but there has been no form of feedback, then the effectiveness of the communication cannot be judged. Feedback is defined as the response to a message by the rece- receiver. All businesses communicate. They communicate externally and internally. When we say externally, it means they communicate with suppliers, customers, shareholders, and the government. For example, the significance of effective external communication is obvious. The potential customer confused about a product's qualities because of a poor advertisement or suppliers delivering to an incorrect address are just two examples of what can go wrong. Internal communication is between different people or groups within the organization. Why is effective communication important? Number one is staff motivation and thus labor productivity. If staff are encouraged to participate through group discussions, for example, then effective communication will aid motivation. Workers feel out of touch and isolated if there is poor communication. The number and the quality of ideas generated by the staff if staff are asked for their ideas. Speed of decision making, the more people who have to receive and react to a message, then the slower the decision making system will be. Speed of response to market changes, if changes in consumers decision take a long time to be communicated to the decision makers at the head of an organization, then the business will be slow to respond with appropriate products. Uh, Then there are certain communication medias. What is communication media? The methods used to communicate a message. We have certain methods. Number one is oral. What are the strengths of oral or verbal communication? It is direct, can be varied to suit needs of receiver. It varies person to person, easy to understand, can be questioned quickly. What are the weaknesses of verbal or oral communication? Need to listen carefully, affected by noise, passive, no permanent accurate record, can be quickly forgotten. And uh, let's talk about written communication. What are the strengths of written communication? It can be recorded, permanent record, more structured, easy to distribute. Can it be varied? Can be referred to again. What are the weaknesses of written communication? Often difficult to read, message identical to each receiver. Sometimes we need to differentiate between the messages where we are sending. No body language, feedback slower, no immediate response, may be misinterpreted, costly and time consuming. Then we have another method, visual communication. More interactive, demands attention, often easier to remember, creates greater interest. But weaknesses are needs close attention, sometimes too fast, not always clear, interpretations by receivers can vary. IT or web-based communication has great speed, interactive, messages can be sent to many people, it encourages response, overcomes global boundaries, universal, good image for external communication. But it has weaknesses, cannot always be received, poor internet access, relies on receiver responding and acknowledging, expensive in hardware, risk of communication overload, excessive emails, security issues, diminishes interpersonal contract. Then we have another problem, information overload. So much information and so many messages are received that the most important ones cannot be easily identified and quickly acted on, most likely to occur with electronic media. Let's discuss the communication barriers. Number one, failure in one of the stages of communication processes. Number one, the medium. The medium chosen might be inappropriate. If a receiver forgot part of a long message given to them orally, then the written version would have been more appropriate. A misleading or an incomplete message would result in poor understanding. The excessive use of technical language or jargons of tough or tough terminologies which are ununderstandable by your workforce. If there is too much information, information overload, perhaps more than is actually necessary. If the channel of communication is too long, the channel is route through which a message is communicated from sender to receiver. Poor attitude of either the sender or the receiver. If the sender is not trusted, perhaps because of previous misleading messages or unpopular decisions, 
then the receiver may be unwilling to listen to or read the message carefully. Unmotivated or alienated workers make poor receivers. Intermediaries, those on the communication channels, may decide not to pass on the message or to change it. The sender may have such a poor opinion or perception of the receiver that no effort is made to ensure clarity of message. Number three, physical reasons, noisy factories, geographical distances, etc. How to reduce these communication barriers? This is really interesting. Six points. Number one, ensure the message is clear and precise but adequately detailed. Number two, keep the communication channel as short as possible. Number three, make sure that channel of communication are clear to all involved. Number four, build in feedback to communication process so that problems with receipt or understanding of message message can be checked again, can be checked quickly. Number five, establish trust between senders and receivers. This could be most easily achieved in a business where the culture is to accept all staff as being important and as having useful contributions to make. Number six, ensure that physical conditions are appropriate for messages to be heard or received in other ways. Then there are formal communication networks, the official communication channels or routes used within an organization. And there can be chain network, the vertical network, the wheel network, or the integrated or connected network. And then we have another terminology, informal communication, unofficial channels of communication that exist between informal groups within an organization, like communication between the colleagues. So there are certain alternative views of informal communication. Some manager thinks that it wastes valuable working time, it spreads gossips and rumors, it may result in informal groups banding together to resist management decisions. And some managers think that all informal communication can help create important feelings of belongingness and social cohesion. Management can use the grapevine to test out new ideas and see what the unofficial reaction might be. If it is too negative, they might never make an, an official announcement. And Informal communication can help to clarify official messages by talking them over with friends. That's all. Thank you very much.